right, we're back for round two. Let's go ahead and take a look at our opener. Won the die roll again. So lucky. This hand is pretty great. Uh, we got a couple one drops. Probably going to leave with favorite hoplite over Lagana just so that we can uh, maybe do a little more damage. Hi, Matter. You too. Alrighty. Let's see if he takes a mulligan. He's going to keep it. Alright, we're going to lead with the windswept heath again, just uh, thin our deck a little bit. Uh, hopefully, f fuel a later treasure cruise. I'm sorry about that. Well, my last video just got done. Alright, favorite hoplite forest into Elvish Mystic. Okay, well, this could be a weird racing type situation. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and play Seeker here, try to get a little more damage in. Since he had led with Forest, I don't think he's going to have too much in the way of removal. Uh, although it could be uh, the green-red Dragons deck that CVM has been doing pretty well with lately. Alright, still Carrotted. This Valor Sense sh should be pretty good in the matchup. get a little more damage in. I guess I, I shouldn't have played my land first, just in case, but... Alright, we're gonna go ahead and play this Hero of Iroas. And... If he plays Whispered Elemental here, that's kinda bad for us because he gets the 2-2 off of it, but it can actually block and kill our guy, and we can just go Valor Stance to Whisperwood before attacks. And he'll be tapped out. Uh... If he goes Mountain Storm Breath Dragon, that could be problematic. I feel like if that happens, uh, what we ultimately end up doing is just using Valor Stance to protect our own creature uh, after we attack so we can make sure we have uh, enough creatures to keep attacking past Storm Breath Dragon. And for, even if we start losing our creatures, he'll have to start chump blocking with mana guys at some point. So if it's just Blue Kronos, then he's just dead. Alright, Xenagos, that's okay. Yep. Alright, well, let's send, I guess, two of them at Xenagos. And we'll just, or I guess we'll send both the uh, Heroic guys at Xenagos and the Seeker at Helm. That way, uh, we can... Let's see. Is that how? Yeah, because if he, we don't want to have to define strike the seeker of the way. We want to define strike one of the heroic guys. So let's do that. Kind of sucks that you know we're taking away a little bit of the. Uh, uh, it, he took the focus off of his life total, even though he was so low. Um, I think I want to save the Define Strike. Since I know he's playing red now, he might have uh, something to deal damage to our guys. So, and we're we would only deal one more point of damage if we define strike now, and we can define strike this Lagana Ban uh, Trailblazer to have four different guys that can attack. All right, just play Thunderbreak Regent. That would be great. Then we'll just kill that. Yeah, we had to kill Xenagos. If we didn't, we couldn't kill him with damage, and he could have played Dragon Lord of Tarka with the tick up. So, all right, well, let's attack with everybody, and might be able to kill him if we get lucky on this Defiant Strike. So it's two, four, six. So this is uh, seven, eight, nine, and then Stance is eleven. So he didn't block. So now he dies. Okay. It says two, four, six, nine, and then stance indestructible. And that'll pump Seeker enough to kill him. Yeah, I think he just really wanted to try to get Dragon Lord Tarkin to play. Um, so he thought maybe not blocking one turn would be good for him. 
Can't blame him, I guess. Uh, here, I guess, we sideboard again into the uh, control-ish deck, but we don't really need Stratus Dancer. Unfortunately, Stratus Dancer cannot counter Xenagos, but it does fly. That's pretty decent. So let's bring in all this stuff. We'll just try to counter and kill all of his more relevant threats. Uh, cut the Seekers. Um, Jai's presence is not great. We're gonna ban Trailblazer is not great. Now we're going down to 12 creatures, which obviously doesn't seem like a lot, but the game's gonna go pretty long. He's not gonna be able to kill our creatures very easily, and uh, well, maybe that is not. Maybe we don't have enough at that point. That is not very many. But Aqua's form is great. Um, God's willing can help us bust through the green guys. I'm not sure if that's overly necessary. Huh. Since we have the Aqueous Form and Monastery Mentor to get around it, and the Encase and Isis to lock them down, so maybe we just cut those and maybe... Yeah, I think we just cut those. We'll leave in one more Lagana Band to give us 13 creatures. Yeah, like I said, we're, we're kind of switching into this weird control deck. Um, and I'm not even sure if it's good. It's just something that I've been wanting to try. So, there you go. Uh, this hand is pretty great in this matchup. Uh, we're going to probably lead with Temple over playing a one-drop creature. That way we can play Hero on two and then maybe go in case or deal on three. All right, we drew Tranquil Cove. All right, yeah, we'll scry first. I don't think we need another land right now. Well, we definitely don't need one right now. It'll hopefully be a while before we actually need that one. Now, if he plays Whisperwood on three, that's horrible for us. We need to draw Valor Stance, like, now. I guess we can hold up a Counterspell here for the potential of that. And if he just plays Plukronos, uh, we might be locked into countering that. But regardless, we need to basically counter what he plays this turn, I think. And the next turn, we can play a guy. Disciple? Yeah, I don't care about that. I may want to encase and ice it though, if I'm going to hold up uh, a counter spell next turn. Seems like a waste, but that is actually a reasonable amount of pressure on us if we're not going to be playing a creature. So that was his big play there. I kind of want to play a creature now. I think I'm going to. I don't think he would have played around Disdainful Stroke, so he probably just didn't have another big guy to play that turn. He might have been able to like Genesis Hydra for three, and, but now he's going to be able to Genesis Hydra for four and that doesn't even, the Stable Stroke only stops like half of that anyway, so it's not even that great. Ravaclaw Mystic and Disciple, sure. So he's got a kind of a weird anemic draw. We're just going to play Favorite Hoplite, hold up for uh, Disdainful Stroke next turn or if he doesn't do anything for to make us use our mana, we'll uh, just played Defy Strike more than likely. Alright, so he can... He can only do it for... Uh, 1, 2, 3, four, one, two, three, four, five. So he has enough at this point to just cast a Tarka. So I think I want to... Actually, I want to be a little more aggressive with my with my turn. So I think I want to use my Counter Spell now and then use Valor Stance later. I also kind of want to double block, but I don't think that's necessary. Alright, we'll start off with Defiant Strike, I guess. Hmm. Thinking. He's got a lot of life. This might be a little tough to get through. Let's see. If we. We want to make sure we hold back, uh, I guess we want to hold back Favorite Hoplite. Yeah, I think this is actually a better play. We're going to attack with just Hero, hold back Favorite, and then use def uh, Defiant Strike to save our Favorite Hoplite. This also lets our Ordeal give our Hero of Arose an extra counter, which has a little bit of value in itself. Alright. So we're just going to take the damage from 
his guys. We're going to put a stop on a second main phase so we can Valor Stance the Whisperwood Elemental. Yeah, so he didn't attack. That's great for us. We're just going to kill his guy. Attack, draw, some cards. Might attack with both. Not sure. Yeah. Huh. Treasure Cruise is good. I think we can actually afford to attack with both here. If he wants to block, we get to turn our Defiant Strike into a removal spell. If not, we just get to... Uh, a little bit of extra value out of it. Uh, we'll go ahead and define strike. Let us get a little closer to treasure cruising. All right, take eight. So we can cruise for two and hold up in case an ice, or play Lagana Ban. Uh, I think I like cruising here. Let's play Lagana Ban on D. Now, even if he plays Dragon Lord Tarka, uh, he can only kill one guy. And then we get to kill it, and we still have a guy. Looks like he has a big spell. I'm really hoping it's not Genesis Hydra. It might be a Tarka. Seems kind of weird. So I think I want to block a one power guy here. Like if we block uh, a one power guy, then uh, if he plays Dragon Lord Tarka, he can't kill the Lagana and the Favorite Hop Light. He's just he's gonna kill Hero regardless, I think. So three, four, we take six. I don't know. Maybe we're just dying to Crater's Claws. Let's see. Let's see. It's two, four, five, six, seven. If we block here, he still can only kill... He can kill the Lagana Band and the Favorite Hoplite, but not Hero. And that just leaves us a bigger guy in play. I think that's just a safer bet overall. Yeah, but he's, if he plays Dark Gun and kills these two, we still have a 5-5. Five five. We get to kill his guy, Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Well, that is a card we can't beat. So that's a problem. That's a huge, huge problem. Yeah, this is really bad. We can only we can even only play one guy at a time. Huh. All right. Well, maybe we actually can't play the control game in this matchup. We just have to be aggressive. All right. Well, he's just gonna neg two and then brain us. So we're just gonna go ahead and concede. So I think we want the disdainful strokes. The encase nices looked pretty bad. The Valor Strances I think are good though. So we'll leave those. Um, the God's Willings or whatever. Maybe those could help. At, at the very least they can maybe let us bust through for lethal on a late turn of the game. So I guess we'll bring them back in. They're like one shot Aqueous forms. Uh, they can save our guy from a Tarka basically just don't have enough tricks, I think, without them. If we cut a Giant's Presence and God's Willing. So we'll bring those back in on the play. Maybe we can cut a Treasure Cruise. Not a lot of our guys are dying. Alright, we'll do that. Alright, this hand is pretty great. And hopefully just doesn't play anything uh, too big, too fast. Always have elf. Elf, elf, elf. Elf, elf with sprouts. Alright, let's go ahead and fetch planes before we draw. Mentor is awesome. If we get to untap with Mentor, I assume we will. Like, he can't play anything big this turn. 
Hornet nest. Okay, yeah. Awesome. We can actually just aqueous form and start attacking and draw cards. Although that forces us to fetch. I think we want to get our, our mentor into play. We actually have to get the second island here, which is a little bad, but we get to go next turn aqueous form or deal. Morph, likely a death mist. But yeah, we get to start making a lot of tokens. Alright. Go ahead and fetch up another planes. Get some scry action. Draw a bunch of cards. We don't need another land right this second. I'll leave that one on top. That one'll be good next turn. Alright. Might be able to just kill him next turn, depending on what happens. Another morph. I guess they're just den protectors. I can't really think of anything else they could be that would, would be really bad for us. Yep, so we're just going to hold up this Valor Stance and Disdainful Stroke and protect our guy. We already played a land. Just if, he, if something bad happens, we can counter it. And we still have a million monk tokens, so. Oh, Alright. Yeah, so now we are completely protected from, uh, like, Ugin and a bunch of other stuff. And he has to deal with Aqueous Form or our guy. And that has to happen through uh, Disdainful Stroke and Valor Stance. Oh, yeah, they're Rattle Claws. I'm stupid. I was thinking they were something else, maybe. Yep. So, oh no. What is going on? Maybe he's just making a ton of mana and playing out his hand. Maybe he's playing uh, Nylee's Disciple. Okay. If it was Genesis Hydra and then he hit Ugin, that would have been terrible. So that would have been 3, 6, 7, 8. Oh wait, that wasn't... Oh yeah, 9, 10. Yeah, so he had exactly enough to Genesis Hydra and to Ugin, but luckily for us, he didn't have that. So yeah, uh... The Devotion decks, I think, are, are pretty decent matchups. They don't have removal, so it's basically just two decks kind of playing solitaire. The Valor Stances help out a ton. After board, the Disdainful Strokes are pretty great. And uh, Monster Mentor can just go Animal. Uh, Ugin is the main card you have to try to beat with a Disdainful Stroke. It's not really something you can play around. You just have to have an answer for it, um, but they can they can always ramp it out faster than you can kill them. So you just have to be aware of that at basically all times, uh, which is another reason why we're playing four copies of Disdainful Stroke as opposed to uh, other things. Like Disdainful Stroke is just insane in this matchup, and if uh, people are playing it, since or a lot of people played it at the Invitational and did well with it, so if this is a deck that uh, people want to keep playing, then I think going to the Valor Stances and the Disdainful Strokes is definitely the correct choice. Anyway, we'll be back for the next match in just a few.